Good morning, this is Dr. Billy Ng. Welcome on this wonderful, beautiful Sunday morning to another message, another encouraging message from the Word of God. All right. Yeah, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you so much for sending in your support. Thank you so much for encouraging us during this season. Thank you so much for just being here with me, all right? Sunday after Sunday. And I'm just so thankful that you can join me again today. And boy, do we have a message for you, all right? And, um, you know, and if you are writing right now, uh, just uh, put in the comments, you know, just tell me how you are doing so that I can know that you are doing well, all right? So today, uh, once again, we are going to be reading something from scripture if you are or if you have your bible with you all right or if you already turned there as i was going to say if you have your bible with you turn with me to the book of joshua chapter one all right and if you do not have your bibles with you uh, you can follow me along as i read from the word of god all right you know we are a church we are a ministry that is very, very heavily, uh, our emphasis, our, we are very dependent upon the Word of God, what it says. Uh, we are a Bible-believing church, and so therefore we go right into the Word every time we meet, all right? So today we are on Joshua chapter 1, starting from verse 1, all right? So... And we're going to go through a few concepts today, which uh, some of you will be very familiar with. Uh, some of you may need a little bit more explanation, and we're going to go through all of that today as well, all right? Joshua chapter 1, beginning from verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. All right? Hello, Pastor Mark. Hello, Erica. Uh, and you, somebody asked me uh, the other day, uh, you know, how come I say hello to some people and some people I do not? You see, I cannot see everybody which comes on, you know, who views the video. So, for example, our first video, we have like 560 views. I really do not know who has seen the video. But if you make a comment, then I do know that you have come on, all right? So that's the only way I can tell that you are watching the, the, the video, okay? So please make comments along the way. Please say hello to everybody. You know, it's perfectly fine. And we do appreciate uh, it when you make a comment, all right? So let us define certain terms here first so that we know when we are on common ground, all right? So the first thing which uh, God says is Moses my servant is dead. Now, it, you may say, well, that is a very uh, common remark throughout the Old Testament, but there is great significance in the word. Hello there, Lindy. There is great significance, once again, in the word servant, okay? Now, I want you to please understand with me how the Bible describes this servant. So a servant is a person, let us say you have a house and you hire a servant or you hire a servant for your corporation, you hire a servant for your business. A servant is a person whom you hire and he or she comes in to do the job that you hired her or him to do, right? So the moment the servant performs his or her job, then you pay the servant. The servant is worthy of his or her 
wages. All right. So when the servant comes to work, you pay him or her. When the servant does not come to work or does not do a good job, then you do not pay the servant. That is how servants operate. A servant comes in to do a particular job and to do it well, and then the servant expect to be rewarded, to be compensated with a salary, with a wage. All right? So that's a servant. But a servant is distinguished in the Bible from a son or a daughter. Now, most people do not make this distinction because nobody has ever taught them this at all. Hello there, Yona. Most people do not distinguish between these two because they have never been taught about this in the Bible, all right? So, once again, the servant comes into work and at the end of every two weeks or week or monthly basis, you pay the servant. But the servant is distinguished in the Bible from a son or a daughter, all right? So what is the distinction between the two? The son or the daughter of the household has a position in the house which the servant does not have. Okay, so let, let's get this clear again. The son or the daughter has a position in the house which the servant does not have. Because the servant, by definition, works for a salary, works for a wage, works for something, all right? So the person expects something from his, from her work. That is a servant. However, the son or the daughter have privileges. The son or daughter have a position which the servant does not have. Okay? So, in the Bible, in the New Testament, Jesus walks us through the steps. We were servants, then we became friends of God, and then finally, we became sons and daughters of God through what Jesus did for us. So, Jesus brought us through, through, we started out as servants, serving the law, and then we became friends of God, and then we became sons and daughters of God. Now, you may say, well, what particular benefits do we have as a son and daughter compared to a servant? Because, once again, the servant works for a salary. Hello there, Pastor Anthony. The servant works for a salary. The servant works for a wage. Everything depends upon his or her performance, his or her behavior, his or her work, all right? Whereas the difference is that the son and daughter gets an inheritance. That is the difference between the two. The son or daughter gets an inheritance. Now, how, how come the servant does not get an inheritance? Because the servant is paid by his or her works. But the son or daughter, because of their position, gets an inheritance. Now, what is an inheritance? An inheritance is something, as his name suggests, is something that you have a right to because of your position, not because you were hired. You cannot hire somebody in and then give them an inheritance. The person must be of a certain position, a certain legal status, a certain status whereby rights are conferred Hello there, Stacy. Hello there, Justin. Whereby rights are conferred 
or proffer to this position because of this position. So therefore, in this particular passage, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, that's going to be an inheritance. Okay? The people are going to inherit something here, but Moses, being a servant, was excluded from this inheritance because his position was a servant. He was a servant. Hello there, Armenia. He was a servant to the law. He was a servant. So Moses, by his servant position, have no right to what belongs to the children of God. All right? Now, God is going to bring him in one day, but not now. All right? So let's read again. For those, all those of us who are joining us, Okay, for all those of us who are joining us right now, we are on the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1. All right, so Moses died. Moses had no part in the inheritance because he was a servant. So the Moses, Moses had to die so that we, hello there, Greg, Moses had to die because he had no part in the inheritance which the children of God were entitled to as inheritors. Okay, so now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord raised up a son. You see how God raised up the son, all right? Raised up a son, the son or the daughter gets to inherit. And in this case, the son is Joshua. Joshua means Jehovah saved. All right, so these are the people that Jehovah is going to bring in. God is going to bring them into their blessings. Their blessings. Verse 2, Moses, my servant is dead. You, as a believer, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, your position is not as a servant. You are a son, you are a daughter, daughter of God who serves. You serve, I serve, most of us, we serve. But our position that we serve in is not as a servant. We are children of God who serve, who serve faithfully, who serve almost all the time, but we are not servants. All right? We are sons of God. We are daughters of God. So, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. All right? Arise. You rise up as sons, as daughters of God. Rise up. Go over this Jordan and all of these people who are with you onto the land which I do give to them. The land was a blessed land. The land was to be a blessing to you, children of God. God has prepared blessings for you. God prepared these blessings for you because He is a good Father. As a Father, He wants to give you good things. In this case, the blessings, the enormous blessings of this new land. And so he raised up a son. The servant died. He raised up a son, Joshua, to go in and possess this inheritance. All right? Even to the children of Israel. End of verse 2. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given to you. As I said to Moses, this is God speaking. God is saying, I have already given you this land. I have already blessed you with these blessings. It is 
given to you first. It is given to you first. Now, we're going to read a little bit more and then come back to this, all right? Just hold this thought. Verse 4, From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even onto the great river, the river, river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and onto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong. This is the, you know, the famous verse which everybody quotes from. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people, the sons and daughters of God, shall you divide for a inheritance. You see, God gave this land to his children, not as a reward for work done, but it is an inheritance. This is a land which was given to the people, to the children of God, as an inheritance. Inheritance, the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. All right? So God says, I am a good father. I Give this lamb as an inheritance to you. I want to bless you. The blessings are already given. And you, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, you are not to fight so hard for your inheritance. You may say, well, of course they went through it. Yes, because they were still under the law but an inheritance. Think about an inheritance, all right? Let us say uh, you had uh, parents or grandparents who gave you something by his will or her will, and you inherited something. Do you have to go and fight for your inheritance? Do you have to raise up arms? Do you have to, you know, uh, let's say, hey, we have to conquer this because of our inheritance? No. An inheritance means somebody else possess it first and then by your right as a son, as a daughter, you inherited what your parents, grandparents, somebody who loved you very much, they gave it to you. They gave this inheritance to you. And all you have to do is you receive the inheritance. You receive the blessings. The blessings were already provided and you receive it with a heart of gratitude, with a position of thankfulness, of great humility. You say, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, the person who gave you this property, the person who gave you these blessings, you say, thank you so much. You gave it to me. You gave this to me. I get to inherit what you gave to me. And I'm so thankful for this. All right. So in this case, the children of Israel got the inheritance which God promised their fathers, which God says, I will give you this land, all right? This is going to be a land of rest for you. Of course, the land is a symbol of Jesus himself, all right? So with Jesus, with Jesus, you get to inherit blessings. It is your position that counts. It is never your work as a servant which gives you the inheritance. Never will a servant inherit what only a son or a daughter will. Because what counts is your position. Your position in Christ, in this case, is 
you get to inherit all the blessings that God has for you. All the blessings that God has for you, you get to inherit because you reign with Christ as co-inheritor. You are part of the family. You are part of the family of God. It is not because of your goodness. It is not because you earn the inheritance because then it's no longer inheritance. Now it's your salary. Now it's your wage. You get to inherit as a son of God. You get to inherit as a daughter of God. Isn't that great news, all right? So just like the Israelites here, they get to inherit this land because they are children of God. God is their father. God promised them this land. And God says, you will get to inherit this land. If it was an inheritance, if it was not an inheritance, then they will have to suffer. They will have to fight every inch for this land. They will have to deserve it. They will have to fight for it. They will be conquered. They may lose. But in this case, there is no losing because as God says in uh, verse 5, there shall not be any man be able to stand against you. Nobody will be able to stand against you. And you may say, wow, that's right, because they are so strong. No, they were not strong. They didn't have all the advantages that other people had. But look at why they will be strong. Why nobody will be able to stand before them. Just like nobody will be able to stand before you. Look at what it says. There shall not be any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Regardless of whether you are young, middle-aged, or getting on in years, no man shall be able to stand against you. Why? Here's the answer. As I was with Moses, the servant, I will be with you, the son, the daughter. I will not fail you nor forsake you. That is why nobody can defeat you. That is why nobody can come against you. That is why no disease can come against you as well, as I said for the last couple of Sundays. Nobody can come against you, not because you are somehow supernaturally set aside that you are better than somebody else, that you are somehow rewarded with this. You are protected. You are set aside. You are sanctified. You are blessed. You are protected. You are victorious because of one reason. And the reason is, God says, Jesus says, I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. I will be with you. I was with my servant Moses, but now I will be with you, my son, my daughter. I will never leave you nor forsake you, as Jesus mentioned, so you know, which we all quote so many times. You see, that is the reason why we are successful. That is the reason why a believer can never be defeated. That is why a believer, you, me, and millions of others can never be put down. No matter what they say, no matter what crazy things are happening today in America, no matter what happens, we as believers, we cannot be put down. We cannot be defeated. Not because we are so much better than anybody else. Not because somehow or other we have this 
aura uh, around our heads. We have a halo around our heads. No. If you cut us, we bleed. Just like all those other people out there on the streets. You see, just like the police, just like the protesters, just like all those people. We are just normal people. But we have Jesus. The one who says, I will never leave you nor forsake you because you are my son. You are my daughter. You are my child. That's what God says. So that's why I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you through this situation. I will be with you no matter what happens around you. I will be with you. It's not a man's promise because men will lie. When things get rough, men will depart, but not God. God says, I will be with you. And that is a guarantee. Oh, yes. You know, I don't know how many times you and I, you know, how many times I, I, I'm sure we all have testimonies about that. How many times we go through things or things happen around us, recessions, you know, pandemic that we are going through right now. Everything that we went through, we come out of it blessed. Fine. Our families are fine. Our work is fine. Our house is fine. Why? Because Jesus is with us. Jesus is with us. He is within us. He is around us. He has our back. He goes before us. He is around us. Jesus is with me. Jesus is with you. And just because of Jesus, we are fine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, and that's why some many people say, well, why do you preach about Jesus? Well, what else am I supposed to preach on? Am I supposed to preach on who is deserving, who is not deserving? But everybody else has a different opinion. You have a different opinion. Your friends have a different opinion. Your parents have a different opinion. Your husband has a different opinion. Your wife definitely has a different opinion than you. So why, why do we want to say who is deserving, who is not deserving? Because everybody has a different opinion. But when we preach about Christ, there's only one opinion, God's opinion. God's opinion about His Son is all that matters. Because when God looks at His Son, he sees perfection. He says, that's my son. Jesus. That's my son. And just with that, because Jesus is with you, you get to inherit. You get to be blessed because of Jesus in you. Let's continue on. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For unto these people shall you divide for an inheritance. That's the word where I was explaining before. The land, because you inherit it, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be you strong and very courageous. All right. Why? Once again, how can you be strong and very courageous? Because of Jesus with you. Jesus is with you. There is no need to fear. You can cast, as what the verse which we always uh, say in the church, you can cast all your cares upon Him. Do you have a care? Do you have a worry? Yes. Do you have anxiety? Yes. We live in this world, in this society, where so many things seem to go wrong, right? But that is what the world is. Jesus says it very clearly. In this world, you are going to see trouble. Okay, you are going to see troubles, but the troubles are not going to touch you. Why? Once again, 
because of Jesus with you. All right? Be strong. Be very courageous. All right? And of course here, because uh, as we read along, you may observe to do according to all the law. In verse 7, the Israelites were under the law. They were under the law. They were not under grace or Jesus. All right? They were under the law. So they had to do the law in order to continue enjoying the blessings of God. So the law is very simple. Do the law and you will enjoy the blessings. Hello there, Dr. Iso. Do the law and you will enjoy the blessings. But under grace is Jesus did the work for you. That is why you get to enjoy the blessings. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with you enjoying, enjoying the blessings because somebody else did the work for you. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He did the work for you. Jesus did the work for you. And because of his work, we, you, and I, we get to become sons and daughters. You cannot earn your way, buy your way, merit your way to becoming a son or daughter. You will always be a servant. You will always, always, be a servant if you try to work your way up. But when somebody adopts you, takes you in and say, from today onwards, that's our born again experience, right? From today onwards, you, you, yes, you, are a son. From today onwards, you are a daughter. The position was given to you. Here you go. You are a son. You are a daughter from today onwards because of Jesus. And the moment you become a son or daughter in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, you begin to inherit all the blessings that your Father has for you. Simply because of your position. And now if you look at the verses which come after that, all right, it says very clearly, so you just substitute now the law for Jesus, all right? Because Jesus made you, He fulfilled the law, and he made you to become sons and daughters of God. So when the verse reads, do not depart from Jesus. Hear Jesus every day. Do not hear all the terrible news out there. Yes, be aware of it, but do not hear the news 24 hours a day. Because then, you get fearful. You get anxious. You think things are going to go wrong. Things are going to go to hell or something. No. Hear Jesus. Think about Jesus. And speak Jesus. Meditate on Jesus. Think about Jesus. Day and night. Read the verses. First jo Joshua chapter 1. All right? Meditate on Jesus. Sit down. Hello, Joe. Sit down. Find a quiet spot. Turn off the news. Yes, everything is going on out there. We know. We are not stupid. We were not born yesterday, right? We know what's happening out there. But let us, that's not our focus. 
just like our, our focus is not Satan, right? We don't worship Satan. So why do we focus on Satan all the time? We don't worship sin. That's why we don't focus on sin all the time. We focus on our Savior, Jesus. Because He is our role model. He is our Lord. We say Lord, and then we go listen to news. Find a quiet place every day. Find a place. Hello there, Tony. Good to see you. Find a quiet place every day. Hear Jesus. Read the Word of God. What it actually says in the Bible. Listen to a video like this. Over and over again. Get the scripture into your head. And then meditate on it. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Focus on Jesus. Focus on what he says. He says, be strong. Be of good courage. Because I'm with you. I'm not going to fail you. Am I a God which fails? Am I a God which runs away when protesters are outside? Am I a God who does not care about you? No. He's a very caring father. A very loving father. Who loves you despite yourself. Who loves me despite myself. Look at what it says. For the Lord is with you, verse 9, wherever you go. Verse 8. You, he will make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Success, prosperous. Because that is what a good father wants for his child. Don't we have a good God? If we truly understand who we are. We are sons, we are daughters who serve. An awesome God, a wondrous God, a magnificent God, and He is our Father. He gives us our inheritance. He gives us success. He gives us prosperity. He takes care of us. He protects us. He provides for us. What more can I say? That is why every day we speak, we proclaim the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name. Jesus, the one who did it all for me, the one who did it all for you. Come, let's pray. Mm, thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus, you will never leave me nor forsake me. You will always be with me through every circumstance, through all the craziness that's happening here in America as well around the world, through every circumstance, Jesus, you are with me. And Jesus, right now, we thank you. We thank you humbly from our hearts. We thank you that you made us sons and daughters. Father, you elevated us from being a servant, then to being a friend, and now to being a child of God. Father, we just thank you. And we hold on to you in your promise that you will never let us go. 
Father, even when we are weak and we let go, we know and we are assured that you will never let us go. And just with that alone, we are secure, we are provided for, we will have good success, we will, we will be prosperous, and we will get to inherit. Because you hold on to us, even when we were weak and we couldn't hold on anymore. Or even when we doubted, even when we turn away. You never turn away from us. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for this coming week. We are blessed because of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. So it's just wonderful. Once again, thank you to each and every one of you uh, who has joined me this morning. And it is so blessed to see you here. All right. And we will keep you updated. Hello there, Christina. It is so blessed to see you here. All right. And as I mentioned before, I, I you know, out of the, all the, the sometimes, uh, you know, a few hundred of you who watch this video, I do not, I cannot see you here. I, Pastor Mark, once again, uh, only if you make a comment, then I can see that you have, uh, you have joined us. All right. So please, uh, forgive us if we do not uh, thank you uh, because simply because we cannot see you on the screen uh, we cannot see all the people on the screen all right and i will see you again next week and of course our wednesday night teachings as well or uh, our zoom meetings and uh, any other meetings that we have uh, during the course of the week all right thank you so much love you hello stacy again and justin all right love you all and I will see you again next time. Take care. You know, have a great day. Enjoy yourself today. Okay.